in this final video, part four, discussing the intermolecular forces of attraction between molecules of NCl3. We will see how strongly the molecules in a sample of NCl3 are attracted to each other and how that depends on which intermolecular forces of attraction are present. When it comes to forces of attraction between particles in a sample, if it is an ionic compound, there are electrostatic attractions between the positive and negative ions. Ionic compounds have ions. Those are atoms with positive and negative charges because they have fewer or more electrons than protons in the atom. NCl3 is a covalent molecule. You can refer to the part one video of this series where we were naming the compound and found that it was covalent. There are three types of intermolecular forces possible then for CCl3, NCl3. All covalent molecules have a very temporary force of attraction between them known as London dispersion force of attraction. This is the weakest force because the attractions can quickly become repulsions. And so here I've drawn an example where we have two molecules. At moment one, <laughs> molecule one has a more partially positive side on the left of the bond and on the, or molecule. On the right side, there's a more partially negative atom or side to the molecule. Currently on the left side here we have an attraction between another molecule of the same molecule, same compound, and that's happening because we have the partially positive side on one molecule being attracted to the partially negative side on the other molecule. The electrons in the bond in that top molecule, then shift. They move over to the nucleus of the other atom. And so now the atom A, or left side of the top molecule, is partially negative. And atom B, or the right side of the top molecule, is partially positive. This creates repulsion, or repulsive forces, between molecule one and molecule two. In nonpolar molecules, the electrons are shared evenly throughout the molecule. And so the delta plus and delta minus, or partially positive side and partially negative side, those regions shift quickly. That's what makes the London dispersion forces of attraction so weak, because they're so temporary before they become repulsions again. With NCL3, we discovered in the previous video, part three, that it is a polar covalent molecule. That means it has a more positive side to the molecule and a more negative side. In polar molecules, the electrons are not shared evenly throughout the molecule. And so I've shown different ways here. You can use the arrows showing that the electrons between the nitrogen and chlorine atom are being drawn more towards the chlorine atom's nucleus. Chlorine maybe has PlayStation, Xbox, and uh, the fresh Oreos and Cheetos at his place. So the electrons shared in the bond prefer to go over to his house, to his nucleus, more than they want to hang out at Nitrogen, who just has older versions of video games and stale food. The other way to represent that is to draw the delta symbol, delta plus and delta minus. I've drawn blobs to represent the NCl3 molecule, showing how it's not symmetrical, that it's polar. And by drawing three blobs of the same NCl3 molecule, I'm showing an intermolecular forces of attraction, again, between the partially positive sides of the molecule and the partially negative sides of the molecules. Okay, this is a more, this is a longer lasting attraction because the electrons will hang out longer at 
chlorine's nucleus than they will at nitrogen's nucleus. It's not as momentary as seen here with the nonpolar molecules and nonpolar bonds switching back and forth more quickly. What this leads to then is a different force of attraction, a different name. It's known as a dipole-dipole interaction. Those exist between polar molecules. A dipole exists when there are two poles, one positive side and one negative side. NCl3 is polar covalent, which means that it experiences dipole-dipole interactions because it's polar and London dispersion forces because it's covalent. A final note, hydrogen bonding occurs only when hydrogen is directly bonded to oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. Hydrogen has only nice friends. NCl3 doesn't have an OH bond, an NH bond. It's also not HF. So NCl3 doesn't experience hydrogen bonding between its molecules. The hydrogen bonding would be the strongest intermolecular force of attraction. If it had hydrogen bonding, it would also be polar, and so it would also have dipole-dipole interactions, and it would be a covalent molecule, so it would have London dispersion. NCl3 has only these two forces of attraction between its molecules.